Alligators, what's up? It's Allie Hardesty and today's video is going to be some dorm room horror stories from my freshman year of college because there's a lot of them. The more that I thought about it, the more I realized that I have snuck not only people but also animals into the dorms and got away with it. I've also been caught for doing a couple of those things and I've also had somewhat of a paranormal experience and you guys have all heard my story about my roommate who moved out, the roommate from Hell story time. If not, I will link that below. You guys should probably check that out because there were just a lot of things that happened my freshman year in the dorms and I don't regret living in the dorms when I did. It was a really great experience, but I am a lot happier living in an apartment now. I'll tell you that much. I especially wanted to share some of these stories with you guys because I know that a lot of people are going to be entering college now in the next couple of months. So yeah, I'm going to do a lot of kind of back to school related videos and topics coming up here. So if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and look forward to all those videos and let's just jump right in. So the first story I have for you guys involves a couple of my friends who snuck a cat into the dorms. There are these stray cats that roam the premises all around the dorms that I lived in at my school a couple years ago and they're stray cats but I think people feed them or something because either way they stick around and so I had these two friends who were roommates that always were trying to get this one cat to follow them inside and one day they were successful and it did so this cat followed them into their dorm room and they kept it there for like a few days consecutively like it slept in there it ate in there everything they took care of it and one day I was in their room visiting them and I took a picture of the cat for my snapchat story and posted it and when I went back to my dorm later on I had the administrator people like the campus safety dorm people who basically make sure you're not doing anything that's against the rules knock on my door and ask me if I was holding a cat in my dorm like if I had a cat in there and I knew like right away that the person who snitched and like told the people was my old roommate I could just tell by who viewed my story and all that and she was just the type of person to do that so I was like really annoyed <laughs> because I just wanted to put it on my story maybe that wasn't the smartest thing for me to do but regardless it wasn't in my room it was in somebody else's room but you couldn't tell by the snapchat because all the dorms look pretty similar you know so they searched my room there was like three people searching my room like they took this so seriously they looked through my underwear drawer which was like this blue container that was like it was big enough where it could have held a cat in theory but like it wasn't it was literally just my underwear and so this like 40 year old lady is like going through my underwear drawer and she's asking if the cat's in there and I'm like no like you can keep going through my underwear drawer like there's no cat in there I promise and so they went in my bunk bed they went everywhere they like looked my room up and down and like thank god I didn't have something bad in there because they would have found it like I'm a good kid I wasn't smuggling drugs but if I was they would have found it because they went through my entire room so when they leave they tell me I'm fine but they're gonna be watching me and all this stuff because they heard I had a cat and I'm like no okay yeah I don't have the cat I haven't seen the cat whatever they leave I quickly delete the picture off my story and I never posted a picture of that cat again when my friends snuck it in because I didn't want to get them in trouble. And I think they were spooked out of ever doing it again too. I'm not sure if they really held the cat in their room after that or not. But yeah, that story is not crazy because I wasn't the one who snuck it in and I didn't really get caught technically either. But this next one takes it up a whole nother notch. I snuck a dog into the dorms for two weeks. It lived with us for two consecutive weeks in my dorm room and my friends who was also one of the owners of this dog. So if you guys are familiar with my dog was kidnapped story, Story time and kidnapping my dog back from the kidnapper story time. It was literally like Corella DeVille, like this girl stole our dog out of our friend's apartment. But long story short, there was a chihuahua that we basically rescued because it had a really bad home and so we wanted to take care of it and do what we could, which probably wasn't the most responsible idea we've ever had because it was like six broke college students who half of us lived in the dorms and the other half had just gotten an apartment where dogs weren't allowed. But hey, we wanted to take care of that dog because it probably would have died if we didn't rescue it and we didn't take it from that person who was giving it away so when we got her we were kind of like what do we do now like we have nowhere to hold her like where is her home gonna be you know what I mean and she was an infant she couldn't even bark yet she was like a very new puppy and so we went we got her food we got her everything she needed we got her pee pads where she could like go to the bathroom on and we set her up in Katie's dorm room so she didn't have a roommate at the time I didn't either so this worked out pretty well and she was like our little stowaway puppy so when Katie would go to class she would come into my room Bailey our dog that was our dog's name and Bailey would stay with me and then when I was in class she would be in Katie's room so we took turns taking care of this dog and then things got complicated when we both had class at the same time because then our dog had nowhere to go we didn't trust their people with her because we didn't know who was a snitch and already like so many people in the dorms knew we had this dog because everyone wanted to come pet her and like see her and stuff so we would get random people knocking on our door like hey can I come meet the chihuahua and we're like 
what chihuahua <laughs> like making sure they're not a snitch and they'd be like no like I really just want to pet your dog and we'd be like okay so we didn't trust other people to take care of her when we were both in class Katie actually ended up bringing Bailey to class with her like in her purse a couple times it was so sketchy we shouldn't have done it but we were just trying to do what we could to take care of our pet and I tried to convince Katie into like letting us put her up for like a better home you know someone else to take her off our hands but she refused it had to be a joint decision between like all six of us I ended up not even really being like the main owner in the end at all because it never like lived with me full-time because Katie ended up moving into the apartment with all the other owners and then they got a thing saying that Bailey was an anxiety dog so they were able to have her there and stuff and then I was just in the dorms and I don't really even see her now but up until Katie moved out of the dorms with Bailey she was literally living in the dorms for two weeks I have no idea how we got away with that and it got really sketched when she learned how to bark because after like the first week or so she started to like yip like you know how chihuahuas they're like yeah like their barks are really specific you can't blame that on anything else like that's a literal dog and if we would have got caught we would have got our dorm deposit taken away for like emergencies and stuff like that and i would have not had a place to live also so that brings me to our next story which is me sneaking in some people and i guess i'll tell this story first so i had this boyfriend my freshman year of college and we had been together since high school i've mentioned him in a lot of my other story times and we broke up during my freshman year and so this actually wasn't even while we were together this was like after we broke up but we were talking for some reason he ended up coming over to my dorm and this was like after hours so if you had a visitor they could only come before like 10 p.m. and they had to leave and you're supposed to check them in and all this stuff and so when he and I were dating he basically never came to my dorm we pretty much always went to his apartment because there was no rules there you know I could spend the night I could hang out for as long as I wanted and have to like sign in this was one of the few times he ever even really came to my dorm he got there at like 11 p.m. or something we were fighting and we were talking or something I don't even remember and then I get a knock at the door and it's like midnight probably and so we were being so dumb like I literally cringe at this I told him I'm like whispering and he could probably hear me this whole time because the dorms are so small and I told him to like hide under my covers so I had him climb up the bunk bed and get under the covers and try to lay flat as if he wasn't there and so I answered the door and tried to act normal and they were like is there a person in here and I couldn't lie like I literally couldn't lie I don't know if you guys know this about me but under pressure like I just can't do it like I have to tell the truth so I was like oh yeah yeah there is and then he popped his head up and he tried to like act casual like he was asleep or something it was so dumb he was like oh hi like we were both acting so sus like trying to cover up the fact that he was like in my room after hours it wasn't even that serious but they took it like really seriously like it was a big against the rules thing you know and they were like he needs to leave now we saw his truck he left his truck like right outside and he has this really big truck and it was probably really obvious that it didn't belong to anyone who lived at the dorm so pretty sure they figured out he was in my room because we were being loud or the security cameras I don't even know but he had to leave and I got a warning from that and they told me that if I ever got caught again that I was kicked out like that was it so I was so paranoid after this but I still continue to sneak people in because that's just what I do right so that leads us to this story which is like one of the crazier ones I was actually doing a collab with one of my first ever YouTube friends he was my friend before I even had a channel Michael Verda he has a prank channel called poke flirt here on YouTube I honestly don't really think he does it anymore I haven't talked to him in a minute but he was the one who was always telling me to start a YouTube channel and so he was the one who basically got me to when I did and so he came up to Reading and he was gonna stay with me and we were gonna film and stuff nothing weird he's just my really good friend and at at this point I didn't have a roommate so he was gonna sleep in her bed I was totally fine with sneaking him in and I thought that it would be low-key because as long as we didn't leave the room after the curfew time as long as he just stayed in there they usually didn't go check or anything like that he came up from Brentwood which is like a three four hour drive we were filming having a good time and then I get a call from my ex-boyfriend I don't even want to name him because I'm not trying to throw shade at all this is just like a pretty crazy story one ex-boyfriend it wasn't the one I just mentioned it was a different one the guy I dated after him whatever and he basically <laughs> told me that he was in Reading and he came to see me and he was trying to surprise me and earlier that day he had been texting me asking if he'd come up and see me because we were like still friends after we dated for a little bit we're, like we are now and everything too but like at the time we were too and I told him no that I was busy and stuff and I think he got like a little bit jealous that I was hanging out with Michael even though he was just my friend so he showed up anyways even though I told him no so he calls me tells me that he's in Reading and I'm just like oh great like I don't know what to think because now I have to sneak not one but two people into my dorm room when there's only two beds and it was just gonna be like a really complicated situation and I wanted to film and I didn't want to be distracted and so it was just like like, okay so we ended up all filming together hanging out together and stuff 
and then when it came time for bed, he slept in the bed with me because I wasn't gonna make him sleep with Michael or Michael sleep with me, you know, he was my ex-boyfriend, whatever, we were just sleeping. And then Michael slept in the other bed. But my ex, who was like in the bed with me or whatever, he like wouldn't freaking go to bed. He was just like trying to tickle me and be weird and like annoying and I was like, stop, like I need to go to bed. Like I have to wake up early tomorrow. I had a bunch of homework and I was just exhausted and he didn't want to go to bed. He was not tired. And so he's telling me he has a handle in his truck, like a handle of alcohol and he really wants to drink. And I'm like, no, go to bed. And he keeps bothering me about it and he's telling me that he wants to go get it. And I'm like, no, they'll see you on the security camera. So if you're gonna go to that extent, I'll just go get it for you. Like I'm not gonna drink, I'm gonna go to bed. I'm tired, Michael's already asleep at this point in the other bed, but I'll go get it for you if this means you'll shut up because he would not stop bothering me and I was getting really agitated. So I left my dorm, I went to his truck, I got the alcohol for him, came back in the room and he's like, okay, I'm just gonna take a couple shots and then I'll go to bed. And I was like, fine, I didn't care. I was like, whatever. But it was kind of weird because it was like, I'm asleep, Michael's asleep. Like, why do you just wanna drink by yourself? You know, but I guess he was really bored. And so I'm asleep, Michael's asleep and he's just up alone drinking, like watching Netflix or something on my computer. And so I wake up like an hour later and he looks at me and <laughs> I don't even want to go to detail, but he was just like basically very, very intoxicated. He was just getting really emotional. I think he even started crying. I don't know. He was just like not in his right mind, you know, like he obviously drank a lot. And I'm like, how much did you drink? So he holds up the bottle and literally like probably more than half of it was gone. Like he drank that all by himself. So I'm like, okay, you need to go to bed. Like come back up here. Let's just go to sleep. Okay. And he's like, all right. So he gets back up, lays down for a second. So I close my eyes and then he gets directly back up, walks down the stairs, like the little ladder thing down to like the main floor where he's not on the bunk bed anymore and grabs the trash can and starts throwing up like projectile vomiting everything that he just drank, all the alcohol. So he's puking for literally like half an hour straight, he can't stop puking. And it smells so bad immediately when he starts doing this because we are in a teeny little dorm room. I have no idea how Michael didn't wake up. Michael was asleep for all of this, which is like actually really funny. And so I'm like, crap, what do I do? Because I can't open the window because then other people are gonna hear him and it's gonna look suspicious, but it smells disgusting. Like I'm gonna puke if I don't open a window and there's like no airflow in this room. I don't know what to do. I'm freaking out because I have two guys in my room and nothing's going on at all. They're just, you know, it's my ex-boyfriend who came because he wanted to hang out and then my friend that I'm just trying to make a YouTube video with, but still that looks so bad and it's against the rules and he's drunk. So that's another thing I have against me. I have alcohol in my room, even though I wasn't even drinking. My freshman year guys, I barely even like went to parties or anything. Like I said, I didn't drink with him. It was all him, but still I was gonna get in trouble for all that. So I'm super angry because I'm just like, oh my God, he's being so inconsiderate. He knows I'm gonna get kicked out, that he's here and that he has alcohol and everything. He's putting me at risk right now. Oh my God, I can't just kick him out because he's drunk and the security cameras will see him if he walks out now. So I have to keep him in here until the morning and then even in the morning I have to be careful. And so he was literally puking all night. Even after he stopped puking after those 30 minutes, he just started puking again like another 30 minutes later. And then so finally when he's done, he goes back up into the bunk bed and passes out and he takes up like the entire bed and also he's like snoring really loud just like smells really bad like he's puking he's intoxicated he's drunk like whatever and I'm just like I'm not going back to bed like I'm just gonna stay up all night I was pissed I literally sat in the dorm chair and just contemplated all my life decisions and was so angry I tried to do my homework but I couldn't do it because I couldn't focus and it smelled so bad and I was trying not to wake either of them up and he was snoring really loud too. I felt like honestly other people were gonna hear him just from that. They didn't hear him throwing up. There was just like so much going on, like so many risks I had and I was stressed the hell out. And I'm even more mad at the fact that I didn't even invite him up here. Like he literally just showed up and stuff, which was fine, like we were friends, but like I was pissed because they lived like four hours away and like I just didn't have an apartment at the time like I do now where you know people could just stay on a whim like that. It was different because I was risking a bunch of stuff. So I stayed up the entire night just like literally sitting there until it was maybe like eight in the morning and the sun was out. Michael didn't even know what happened all night because he was literally slept throughout that whole entire thing. So I wake them both up and I'm like, hey guys, time to get up. We need to start our day. I don't want to get in trouble right now. So they both got out of bed and when he gets out of bed, like my ex, the one who had gotten sick, he comes back down and then he starts puking in the other trash can. I only had two trash cans. So now like they're literally both full of puke and he had tied both of them So I was like what happens when you have to puke again? Like there's no other trash can There's no other place to do it. And so then he was like Ali. I feel really sick Can I just lay back down and I'm like whatever like what am I gonna do? You're just gonna throw up on the carpet or something next I was stressing out and I was just so mad and this was Super Bowl Sunday. So I was supposed to go to a Super Bowl party this day. I was so pissed because I ended up missing it because I ended up sleeping the entire day when they did leave because I didn't get any sleep that whole night. And I felt bad because Michael and I didn't really get to film like we wanted to. We actually filmed one video that day where we were sitting on a park bench that's way back on my channel. I think we were talking about 
moving across the country and like dealing with high school cliques or something. It was like random. I don't know. I just started my channel like literally when this happened. And so he didn't leave the one who threw up my ex. He didn't leave until like six o'clock at night or something. Like he was there the whole day sleeping and trying to feel better. I went and I got him Gatorade. I got him all the stuff. I was trying to get him out of there and he just like wouldn't sober up. <gasps> this ended up being the same day. Okay. If you guys have seen my confronting my ex with the other woman video, this same day he left my dorm when he like left to go home and he tried to go see Angie, the other woman. Cause at this time he was like being friendly with both of us. It was pretty crazy. So yeah, that's what happened. But this story isn't even about that. It's the fact that I could have got kicked out and in so much trouble for doing all of those things. But you live and you learn, right? This next story is completely different than all the ones I just told. It's kind of a paranormal story and it's gonna be hard to get you guys to understand what it was like because a lot of it was in my head. Like I was super paranoid, but to this day, this is like one of the scariest things ever to me was how this all went down. So I was on the phone with my best friend, Matt. And at the time we used to talk on the phone like every single night before bed, we'd talk for hours and just have like really deep conversation. And so we got on the subject of like, this is gonna sound dumb, but like Illuminati and like Freemasons and the world ending and like the government like literally the deepest like conspiracy theories you could honestly think of and like it was legit it wasn't even like a joke like we were talking about all this stuff and um we finally got to a point where he was saying you know like i'm honestly gonna sound like a lunatic trying to explain this but it's whatever so he was basically telling me that if the world does end and all the stuff that i could come stay with him at his great uncle who was a freemason's cabin in the woods which was like underground they had food there they were like basically preparing for the end of the world and he was like if the end of the world happens like you can come with me and all this stuff and he was telling me all this stuff that was like super scary because like it's not like you're talking about monsters and stuff like you're talking about real life events that could potentially happen and he was telling me there was like insight that this stuff could happen and so as we're talking about this a gust of wind like blows into the window like the window was closed but basically there was like a storm outside or something so like a bunch of stuff started making a lot of noise and in my dorm i didn't have curtains we weren't allowed to have curtains we just had these blinds that were like super thick and so they started moving and i just started getting super freaked out and so we're on the phone and i start like crying and i'm like you're scaring me like please stop talking about this like i feel like there's paranormal stuff happening in my room right now like i don't like this and i've had paranormal experiences in the past like you guys have probably seen my haunted hotel thing or the slaughterhouse story I had. And I've seen ghosts before. I've like felt paranormal activity. I've even had things happen to me in my apartment. Point was, I felt like a presence in my room. I started to get really, really freaked out. And then he was telling me that it was probably because they didn't like that we were talking about what we were talking about. Like the ghost or presence or whoever was like in my room that was making all that noise. And so I just started to get super ahead of myself, freaked out. I was hyperventilating. And then our friend called me and I merged the calls and I'm crying to both of them. And I was like, Matt scared me. Like he told me this. I'm so freaked out. I don't know what to do. And I'm reciting like the whole thing. Like I'm telling him everything that Matt said and then how I'm feeling. I sound like an actual crazy person. I'm getting myself so worked up. And the friend who called me, the friend that he was with actually recorded me saying all this and he has it voice mode in his phone. I wonder if I can get my hand on that if I can I will import that in the video right now but if I can't then just use your imagination I was literally like speaking gibberish I was just like then the world's gonna end and there's a ghost in my room and then the window's shaking and like I'm crying and like the world's gonna die and then we're gonna go live in an underground cabin in the woods underground where there's food rationed and blah 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 like I was just like on one dude and I was getting so freaked out just from everything at once like I can't explain like the way I felt in this dorm it was super creepy because I live in there alone and have a roommate anymore and in the dead of the night like that like it's pretty freaking spooky, honestly. I don't know if it was in my head because I was convincing myself because of what we were talking about or because it was really there and I felt it before because it felt the same exact way, but I was just getting super, super freaked out to the point where I actually ended up calling my friend down the hall to come in my room and like get me because I had to use the bathroom but I was too scared to like get down from my bunk if no one was there even being on the phone with my friend I was like way too scared to like move or anything because I don't know have you guys ever had bad dreams and you like get up and scream and run away or something because like for me whenever I have a bad dream or experience I get like frozen like I get scared where I don't want to move so I ended up having to call my friend to come to my dorm like down the hall so she could escort me to the bathroom because I was too scared to get down from my bunk by myself but anyways that was just something I remember living in the dorms that happened that was pretty cray cray I'm sure there have been a lot of other experiences that I just forgot to mention in this video So if you guys want a part two be sure to let me know about giving this one a big thumbs up Comment below letting me know what you thought of all these experiences overall Which one you thought was the funniest and or the craziest if you are new Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on my post notifications by hitting that bell button right next to the subscription box Follow my social medias. I will have those on the screen for you guys I also have a patreon if you guys want to check that out where I post videos early do exclusive photo shoots You have access to my private snapchat, etc. And I will see you guys in the next video later alligators Bye.